Hey guys, welcome back for another video. This is something I did a while ago and completely forgot to make a video on. This is gonna be for people using EasyBQ, which I'll talk about also, and Harmony to make sure that when you're done watching something, your BEQ filter is automatically removed from your system so you don't accidentally leave it on. Now I'll put timestamps down below so if you wanna jump right to the how-to, you can do so because I wanna talk really briefly about what EasyBEQ is and why you might want to add it to your system. So BEQ stands for Base Equalization, and the project started years ago to counteract something that unfortunately is very common these days in the whole movie production and TV show production industry. For years now, it's been very common in most films, I'd say nine out of 10, or TV shows, I'm gonna use that interchangeably, to roll off the base. Sometimes, seriously, like 30, 40 hertz, just completely rolled off. There have been multiple interviews with producers, mixers, and that type of thing, and they've given multiple reasons why they do it, and they're absolutely ridiculous. My favorite one is, oh, well, we don't actually have subwoofers in the mixing studio that go below 30, so that's where we roll it off at. It just makes no sense to me. Um, a lot of them have said, well, most people play things on just TV speakers or sound bars, so we just roll off the bass. Why? It doesn't hurt anybody to have the full signal for those that have great subwoofers and transducers and want to hear it. But alas, that's what they do. And it hasn't always been the case. And there are some infamous examples of even going between mediums. For example, Blu-ray releases having great bass, not rolled off or not rolled off nearly as much, and then the 4K version comes out, same movie, and they just psh, roll off the bass for no freaking reason. So the BEQ project is looking to just undo that. At least that's the original intent of it. It's a completely volunteer system. The authors of the reverse filters, in effect, simply undo what's been done. Not all of them operate in exactly the same way, so when you're going through the system, definitely figure out which authors make things to your taste and kind of follow the philosophy that you agree with. I am of the opinion that none of the normal, non-rolled off material should be altered at all, and just whatever's been removed, try to put it back. Some other people just want more bass, give me all the bass, and they treat it more of a house curve, and they're just cranking everything to 11. I don't particularly care for those filters. I don't particularly care for that approach, but it's complete personal preference in both making the filters and you guys using them, what you like and what sounds good on your system. So that's all it is. It's personal preference. Now, by far, the best way to run the whole system is on a Raspberry Pi running the software Easy BEQ. You interface with it on your phone or your tablet or your computer or whatever, any browser. The Raspberry Pi runs the program and it's a web interface and you simply open it up on your device, find your movie, press upload, and it uploads it into a mini DSP box, which is the physical box that is in between your processor, your receiver, and your subwoofers and or transducers. And that's what's loading this reverse filter. It's basically a big fancy EQ. Now, why is all of this important? Well, think about this. If you had very small bookshelf speakers, and that's all you had for your sound, you're not gonna have much bass, right? Let's say they're little five inch normal size bookshelf speakers. You might have bass down to the 50s at the most, okay? Totally normal. What, what if you wanna experience that low, deep theatrical rumble and the kick drums and all that kind of good stuff? Well, you need a subwoofer, right? You need to add to your system in order to experience the lower sound. So you add the subwoofer, all of a sudden, okay, let's say your bass can now go down to 20. Great, now you've got a much fuller range experience. Well, what happens if the signal you're playing, the TV show or the music or whatever, all of a sudden rolled off its bass? Well, your subwoofer is now useless because it doesn't have anything to play. <laughs> so you've built this great system and the content is neutering it for you. That's why we use EasyBQ to bring that back. And what it does is wake everything up. So if you've got great subs that go into the 20s, teens, single digits, if you've got transducers, especially, buck kickers, Dayton, Croson's, anything, 
this thing completely changes your home theater. Completely. It's, it's not even close if everything is tuned right. So with that being said, sometimes, I'm sure I'm not alone, I will be done watching something and I'll forget to cancel out that filter. Now it's not a big deal here. I'm the only one that ever uses BEQ. I'm pretty much the only one that uses the main system. My wife has her own. We don't have any kids here, so no one's apt to accidentally turn something on really loud with the wrong filter loaded and you know blow something out because all of a sudden there's a 30 dB EQ in the system for something else you were watching that you forgot to clear out. That's the whole crux of why I wanted to do this. Now, because I watch everything through Plex, my first thought was use Plex webhooks, which is like a uh, very powerful programming interface and automation tool system that you can interface with lots of other different things. Unfortunately, it wouldn't work exactly like I wanted. I wouldn't want it to load and unload on play pause. And there isn't an exact command for when a show is done. It doesn't know that if you've stopped it or if a show is done or rolled out or anything like that. So it didn't have exactly what I wanted. But because I also control everything through Harmony, I found a way to do it. And the first thing to do is to add the mini DSP into Harmony. And you might think, how is that possible? That's possible because the mini DSP box is actually infrared controlled. There's an optional remote control you can get for it. It has very basic rudimentary commands like power, flipping between one of the four presets. That's, that's key here and things like that. Now you can't go into it and tune things and change parameters and everything, but the basics are there. So Harmony can control what we need to do. And all we need to do is activate one slot. The first thing to do is go into your Harmony app and we are going to go to devices. And you can see down here, it says mini DSP amp at the bottom. That's what I've already added. That's what the mini two x four HD is going to show up as because it's kind of a generic driver. It works with a variety of the mini DSP boxes, and this is the one we need. So down at the very bottom, you're going to click edit devices and then plus device, entertainment device, put in for the manufacturer name, mini DSP, click it down below when it shows, and then we're going to put in SHD and hit add. That's going to go ahead and search the database and it's going to find the driver that we need and that's going to what that's what's going to show up as the mini dsp amp and then you can just click on all through this just say yes no we do not want to add an activity with it now click edit devices click on the amp that you just added and click power settings. We don't want to alter the power settings because the thing just should automatically always be on. So click keep device always on. That just means Harmony is not going to mess with its power during any of its activities. And then click on through to the end. The defaults are fine. And that's gonna save the setting. Now we can add this to whatever activities you have X back out of this. Now click the hamburger menu, Harmony Setup, Add Edit Devices and Activities. Activities. Start with whichever one you have first, doesn't matter. And then down at the bottom, see where it says Rerun Activity? This is a stupid label. <laughs> it's not rerun as in run the activity or start the activity. It's reset up the activity. So click rerun activity. And now here we can check the box next to the mini DSP amp that you just added. And then click on through. And it's going to go through. I'm not going to go through all this because it's going to mess up my activity. But just accept all the defaults. Basically, you're just telling it add this to the activity. Once you get it in the activity, now you can tell it to do something with the activity. In this case, we want to clear out the filter when I turn off the system. So we're going to edit end sequence. You can see I've got the mini DSP amp already in the activity. Ignore that. We're going to add a step. 
down at the bottom. Here's where we pick the device, pick the amp you just added, and assign command. And what I'm doing is using preset one as a blank setup. So I'm never gonna actually load a filter into preset one, that's always gonna be empty. So what this is gonna do is when I turn off the system with Harmony, it's going to set the system to slot one, which is always going to be empty. It's as simple as that. And then click on through, and then you can back out of Harmony or close it. Now, the one thing to note is because EasyBQ doesn't pull the current status from the box, it's not going to show that you've been on slot one. It's only going to show what you've actually done here in EasyBQ. For example, I only use slot four. That's just what I happen to upload everything to. When you pick a movie or a show or whatever, you've got this down here, and this is telling you what slot you're going to be uploading the filter in. So I just leave it on four. You click upload, and down or up here at the top, you can see in slot four, that's the filter that's loaded. Now you can load other stuff into the other slots if you wish. You could put you know four different shows or movies in there if you wanted to for whatever reason. I only watch one thing at a time, so that's just what I do, right? When I turn the system back on, it's always actually going to be on slot one, even though here on this screen, it might show it's still on slot four. And it's fine, even though this filter is in slot four, because the system is actually in slot one, it's just not displaying, the filter doesn't get applied. So it doesn't matter what you play, you're never accidentally going to have a filter playing because you're on your empty slot one. I hope that makes sense. It's a little hard to show, <laughs> but if you're using the system, it probably makes perfect sense. For all the newbies, I apologize. That's as simple as I can make it. And the reason I'm not just telling the mini DSP to clear out the filter like you do here in the interface is because there isn't a command to do so. I think what EasyBQ is actually doing when you click the X is uploading a blank filter basically called empty with zeroed out values. It's not zeroing anything out. So there's no way for the mini DSP to do what EasyBQ does. All it can do is switch between one, two, three, or four. Now let's go back to slot one. So this is how it'll actually be when it powers on next time. And let's say I'm watching this one next time. The four is still selected. So I still just have to click upload. You don't have to alter your routine at all. Just know it's automatically going to be in slot one, no matter what the screen looks like when you power on. All right, hope it helps. See you next time.